This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello, hello, there's Jeff Gooder Devin. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And just a warning, today, May 29th, there's no birthday boy slash girl. So, anyway. On this day, May 29th, 1993, almost three decades ago, at the time of this recording, one of the worst feelings of being a Toronto Maple Leaf fan happened. Yes, it was that famous Game 7 when Wayne Gretzky put up a hat trick to sink the Toronto Maple Leafs in the 1993 Conference Finals. So a little bit of background on the 1993, on how the Kings and Leafs got to the 93 Conference Finals. The LA Kings were third in their division. They took on the Calgary Flames in the first round of the playoffs. And Kelly Rudy was inconsistent in net, so Rob Stauber had to come in and play a few games. Kings beat the Flames in six games. Kings would then face Vancouver in the second round. Vancouver won the Spank Division. Vancouver looked like they were the the good guys in the division. But the Kings took care of the Canucks in six games as well, shocking a lot of people, including that. Oh, I was going to say Gary Shuchuk goal, but that's 91, wasn't it? Or was it 93? I think it was 93 with Shuchuk. Regardless. Now, of course, a lot of people are saying, well, how did you know about the Flames and Canucks? Well, other than looking it up. This was the last year before 1994, before the NHL decided in the 93-94 season to make it the top eight teams from each conference on points would get in, making the divisional playoffs a thing of the past. So the Smite Division playoffs, following the Kings, Canucks, Jets, and Flames, were a thing of the past. Soon they would be ranked from one to eight in the conference and all that. Anyway, so the LA Kings would go to the conference final. The Leafs were in the other division final in the Campbell Conference slash Western Conference. The Leafs were the three seed taking on the number two seed Detroit Red Wings and shockingly pulled off a game seven overtime win in Detroit thanks to Nikolai Borshevsky's tip of a Bob Rouse shot. But send the Leafs to the second round for the first time in six years. They would take on the St. Louis Blues, who did the Leafs a solid by taking care of the division winner, Chicago Blackhawks, who were the heavy favorite to go back to the Stanley Cup for the second straight year. But the Blackhawks fell not only to the Blues as being the one seed, but the fact of the matter, they didn't even win one single game, even on home turf. And, of course, the Blues won an overtime game four, and Ed Belford went bananas. I was surprised he didn't get suspended. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that the Leafs would take on the St. Louis Blues. The Leafs were the favorites. The Leafs had to go through double overtime on Doug Gilmore's sneaky wraparound before St. Louis tied it up on a Jeff Brown double overtime goal. 1-1, Leafs and Blues played even the rest of the way. Game 7 was a no contest. 6 nothing Leafs won. So that got the Leafs to the conference final against the LA Kings. The Leafs were trying to get to their first Stanley Cup final in 26 years at the time, of course. And the LA Kings were trying to get to their first Stanley Cup final ever, and the first for a California-based team. Anyway, the Leafs and Kings would battle each other in a seven-game series that was known for a lot of things. Game one saw the Leafs beat the Kings 4-1. But the issue was Mick Sorley's hit on Gilmore, which saw Wendell Clark come to his teammates' defense and try to pummel with Mick Sorley. Add to the fact that Pat Burns was trying to cross the partition to get to Barry Melrose and the LA Kings bench was a thing of the beauty. Kings would win game 2, 3, 2, and game 3, 4, 2. Leafs would win 4, 2 in game 4 to forward game 5. So it was a best of 3. The Leafs would win late in the first overtime on a goal by Glenn Anderson. And the Leafs, all they had to do was win one freaking game. And that was game six. And as we all know, that incident happened. Thanks a lot, Kerry Frazier. Of course, Frazier did have a point saying that it was the follow through. You can kind of see it was kind of a follow through, but still, Gilbert was cut a little bit. I mean, you didn't have to throw Gretzky out of the game for five in a game for the high sticky. You could have just given him two minutes in the box. And that would have been decent. And at least lose because of the despite all the, the two minute penalty. 
So be it. Carrie Fraser would not be hated by Leaf fans to this day. But unfortunately, he did. And Gretzky scored on the uh, scored on a power play. Game over. Kings win. Force game seven. So it's game seven, Saturday night, Maple Leaf Gardens. I was eight years old at the time. How would the Leafs get back after that pathetic display two days earlier? Well, they started off like shit. When Gretzky came in on a shorthanded break with Marty McSorley and Yari Curry, McSorley gave Gretzky a great pass. Goal, one nothing. Marty McSorley a playmaker? <sighs> Imagine that. Well, the, the Kings had too many men on the ice, so Warren Reichel had to serve that penalty. However, late in the second period, first period, sorry, Tom, uh, Wayne Gretzky with McSorley played it, but Gretzky played it to Thomas Sandstrom, who was a decent sniper. And Sandstrom put up his eighth of the postseason to make it 2 nothing for the Kings. The Leafs looked dead in the water. It was like, wow, that game six loss is going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. However, with Tony Granato in the box for tripping, Wendell Clark and the Leafs offense, power play offense, went to work. From Anderson and Gilmore, Clark scored his ninth goal of the postseason to make it 2-1. Then, at 7.36, Doug Gilmore made another assist with Sylvain Lefebvre, imagine that, to Glenn Anderson. And Anderson puts it in 2-2. looked good. And then Gretzky came in, I think it was a 2-1, I can't remember the second goal, but anyway, Sandstrom and Blake. Passed Gretzky the puck, and he scored to make it 3-2 Kings. No big deal. The Leafs were only down by one, and then they came back. They charged and came back and tied the go the game on a Wendell Clark goal, his second of the game from Gilmore and Foligno. Mike Foligno, who scored a famous Game 5 overtime goal against the Red Wings in the first round. So tied at three, and with like four minutes left, it looked like the Leafs were going to pressure it and go to overtime. Game 7 overtime. Crazy. But the Kings got a quick goal. Alex Shitnick passed the puck to Tony Granato, who passed it to Mike Donnelly. Mike freaking Donnelly, of all people. He made it 4-3 Kings. But that wasn't the goal that broke the Leafs back. Oh, no. 40 seconds later, Pat Conacher gave the puck to Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky slid in. Gretzky was about to pass it out front to McSorley, who was open. But for some strange reason, Gretzky's pass bounced off Dave Ellett's skate past Felix Plata and in the net, the Kings were at 5-3, one of the flukiest goals of all time. Dave Ellett would score near the end of the game from Anarchuk, but unfortunately that Gretzky bank shot was the game-winning goal, and Gretzky put up four points, and the Kings won 5-4. So Gretzky with four points. McSorley had two points on his Thomas Sandstrom. Rob Blake, Pat Conacher, Mike Donnelly, Tony Granato, Yari Curry, and Alex Shitnick only had point each. But also on the 93 Kings, Charlie Huddy, Corey Millen, Luke Robitai, yeah, that Warren Reichel, Gary Shuchuk, Daryl Sador, Dave Taylor, Tim Waters, and of course Kelly Rudy and that. The Leafs, well, their point production. Doug Gilmore with three assists. Gilmore with a pair, Anderson with a pair of assists, Clark scoring twice, Guy Anderson with a point, so it was Elliot Foligno and Sylvan LeFay. They also had Bill Berg, really? Nikolai Borshevsky, before his injury ruined his career, Todd Gill, yeah, that's Todd Gill, Mike Krusielski, former King, Jamie McCowan, Kent Manderville, Dimitri Marinov, Mark Osborne, Bob Pier Rob Pearson, sorry, Bob Rouse, and Peter Cecil. It was a great time for the LA Kings, shocking the world, the hockey world. People were waiting for Leafs Habs Stanley Cup final because the Habs clinched days earlier the conference final against the Islanders. So all the Leafs had to do was do their part. Leafs Habs gave 1993 Stanley Cup final in the 100th anniversary of the Stanley Cup of all things, an all Canadian final. It would have been huge, unless you're from Western Canada. You like. Who the hell do I cheer for? Leafs or Habs? Whatever, yeah. I think the Habs and Leafs might have went to at least six or seven games. I think I'd probably give the advantage to Montreal in a sense in seven. 
because, you know, Montreal, we're major underdogs. The funny thing is, and I said this last year when I talked about the Habs and their 93 Stanley Cup win, and then I talked about the 1993 playoffs at length. I said all four final teams, the Kings and Leafs in the Canva Conference and in the Wales Conference, Montreal and the Islanders, were number three seed in their divisional route. Montreal was the three seed to take down number two Quebec. They took down number four Buffalo in the division final because Buffalo swept Boston. Mayday, 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 Brad May wins in an overtime. Yeah, that one. The others were the three seed. They took down number two Washington. Of course, that was when Pierre Turgeon got rammed into the boards by Dale Hunter after a goal, which saw Dale Hunter get a 21-game suspension, which was the longest until, ironically, Martin McSorley broke that record with his hit on Brashear. Well, regardless of what happened, the, they got to the face number one Pittsburgh Penguins in the division final, one game seven, thanks a lot, David Bullock. And then, of course, Montreal won. As I said, Leafs and Kings were three seats in their thing. So it's kind of weird how things just ended up in threes. And, of course, the Leafs did get close in 94, 99, and 2002 to make the Stanley Cup final, but failed each time. The Canucks got them in five in 94. The Buffalo Sabres in six in 99. And the Carolina Hurricanes, of all teams, six games in 2002. Yeah, being a Leaf fan is tough. But, I mean... Terry Frazier fucked this over because his inability to punish Gretzky led to Gretzky scoring the overtime winner for the fourth game seven, and then he puts up a hat trick, and Bob McKenzie should be playing too because he said he skated like he had a piano on his back. Like, are you fucking nuts? You just gave Wayne Gretzky lots of motivation, or you're basically anti-leaf Bob McKenzie. That's the way it goes sometimes. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I did.